I was changing the oil. I have a zero turn mower. It's got a pretty big motor. So I, I got the oil changed somewhere last year. And I'm, I mean, it, got, it cost me a bunch of money. So I so said, I'm going to change the oil myself this year on that mower. And I don't know why, if you've ever changed oil on a car, why they put the oil filter and the oil drain plug in a place that's so difficult to get to. How many know what I'm talking about? Could you make it simpler? Maybe not. So I'm laying under the mower. I had the cover of the engine up and I had the plug out so it would drain quicker. And Karen's on the porch. She loves watching me work. She's sitting there and I'm under the mower like this, like this, like, you know, I had loosened it. She said, this is exactly how my wife talks. Hey, what's that orange thing sticking up? And I'm under there like, what orange thing? I'm on a thing you can roll around on. I said, what orange thing? She said, that orange thing. I don't know what you're talking about. That orange thing. So I'm like, I'm going to have to get out from under this mower. And get, so I got out. And when I sat up, I have a roll bar, but I have it laid down because I can't get under trees with it. When I sat up, guess what I did? Smacked my head, man. Smacked my head. I mean, boom. And I looked at her and she said, I didn't make you do that. <laughs> and it hurt, man. And you know what we think? God, why did you let that happen? You ever get in your car? And you turn the key and it goes, and you're late and you're running behind. God, why did you cause my car not to start this morning? You ever been laid off from a job or they reduced your salary or they cut your hours? And we say, God, why did that happen to me? Anybody there? Okay, let's go a little deeper. Your spouse leaves you. God, why is this happening? You're dealing with anxiety. God, why? Why, God? You get a, a, a diagnosis of cancer. Why? Why? I have two friends that, that um, uh, uh, attended this church. And I, I didn't ask the person if I could do this, but I know they, they say it's okay. One is, was a godly, he was an elder at our church, a godly man. Stood for righteousness in the court system. And came one day and said, they found a tumor on my brain. And that godly man passed away. And I said, why? And then one of the kindest, gentlest most wonderful men, like, like always built me up. I knew I would preach. I, I preached the worst sermon in the history of humanity, and he'd meet me at that door back then and go, Pastor Doug, that was just such an awesome, that touched my heart. I said, you liar. <laughs> he was my Barnabas. He would build me up, just lift me up. Just, and I'm driving back from my youth thing, and I got a phone call from my wife and she said I have bad news and she said Mark passed away of a heart attack and I'm going I'm driving going what 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 why why and I read things in the Bible I'm like God I mean there was a guy named Stephen in the book of Acts and the Bible says he was filled with the Holy Spirit he was a good man a good man then Paul whose name was Saul, was standing there approving people. He's holding the coats of the guys who are stoning him to death. So Stephen dies, and God calls Paul, who just killed him, and I'm like, why? Doesn't it make sense, God, to keep Stephen alive and kill Paul? Wouldn't you think that? If you were God, wouldn't you think that? Well, we're not God, are we? Matthew 11, 10 through 11 is talking about John the Baptist. 
John is the man to whom the scriptures refer when they say, look, I'm sending my messenger ahead of you, and he will prepare your way before you. Look at verse 11. I won't go all the way to the end. I tell you the truth, of all who have ever lived, none is greater than John the Baptist. Well, I will go to the end. Yet even the least person in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he is. We won't go into that, but that the, one of the greatest men ever, who've ever lived Guess what happened to him? He spoke against Herod. Herod had married his brother's wife. And he said to him, you're wrong for doing that, Herod. He was speaking by the will of God. You know what Herod did? Threw him in prison. And then Herod's uh, uh, stepdaughter was dancing. And it pleased Herod. said, tell me whatever you want. She went to her mom, who was mad at John the Baptist. And she said, tell, tell him I want the head of John the Baptist on a platter. And the king relented for what he said, but he had to do it. John the Baptist was beheaded for standing for righteousness when he was in his early 30s. Why, God? Why? Then we read in Hebrews 11. I want you to look at this. Hebrews 11, 33 through 35, and then we'll go forward. Um, and In Hebrews 11, it talks about all these people that by faith... They received the promise from God, you know. And I've seen God do a lot of things for me. But there's been times I'm going, why? Why? Why is this happening? Okay. <clears throat> By faith, these people overthrew kingdoms, ruled with justice, received what God had promised them. They shut the mouths of lions, quenched the flames of fire, escaped death, by the edge of the sword, their, wicked, or their weakness was turned to strength. They became strong in battle and put whole armies to flight. Women received their loved ones back from death. Yes! That's the life I want. How many want that life? And I believe we can have it, but let's go farther. Let's go farther. Hebrews 11. Boy, aren't I painting a beautiful picture this morning? <laughs> Hebrews 11, 35. But others were tortured, refusing to turn from God in order to be set free. They placed their hope in a better life after the resurrection. Some were jeered at and their backs were cut open with whips. Others were chained in prison. Some died by stoning. Some were sawed in half. And others were killed with the sword. Some went about wearing skins and, of sheep and goats, destitute, oppressed, and mistreated. Listen to this. But they were not, they were too good for this world. Wandering over deserts and mountains, hiding in caves and holes in the ground. <clears throat> Why, God, do bad things happen to good people? Why? Let me give you the first point. Why would a loving God let bad things happen to good people? How many have heard that question? Why would a loving God let bad things do? And when, when we ask that question, we put there, it up there. That incriminates God. That incriminates God. So incriminate is to ch charge someone or to show evidence or proof of the involvement in a crime or a fault. So when we're saying, God, why, why would you let bad things happen to good people? We're saying, God, you did it. We incriminate you. You did it. You're the reason it happened. And I, I look at, I look at uh, the book of Job, which I just finished. I started Psalms two days, the book of Psalm two days ago. And I read the book of Job, and, and I get to the book of Job, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna, I love these first two chapters. Well, I don't love them so much, but I get them. Then for 35, 36 chapters, it's just, it's just bashing Job, questioning God. 35 chapters of it. 35 chapters of it. Job, if you were right, you were Job, if you were this, you were Job. So look, now look, let's look who Job was. Job 1.1, 1, 1. there was, uh, once was a man named Job who lived in the land of Uz. He was what? He was what? A man of complete what? He feared God and stayed away from evil. That sounds like a pretty good guy, doesn't it? Let's read it again. There once was a man named Job who lived in the land of Uz. He was blameless, a man of complete integrity. He feared God and stayed away from evil. He was very wealthy, had seven kids, had all kinds of sheep and, and camels and goats. and He was just a wealthy guy. And in one day, one day, bam, 
He lost all of his animals. Many of his servants died. All seven of his kids in their spot, all of them dead overnight. And if that's not enough, it got to the point where then he got really sick. It says he was from, from head to toe in boils. That would hurt. And his wife comes to him, Job, why don't you get rid of your integrity, curse God, and die? I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. So his friends then start questioning, Job, if you were this, Job, if you were that, Job, if you were this, Job, if you were that. He keeps saying, I haven't sinned, I haven't sinned, I haven't sinned. Yeah, you have, yeah, you have, yeah, you have. And then at the end, this young guy comes out, and he goes, I'm younger than you guys or smarter than me, but I'm about to drop some wisdom on you. And he starts saying it, Job, you're wrong, Job, you're wrong, Job, you're wrong. And God gets his fill of it. He gets tired of it. He's like, I'm about done with this. And this is where I, dude, I love the end of Job. Just absolutely love it. So God shows up. Job 38, 2. Who is this that questions my wisdom with such arrogant words? This is God talking to, to, to Job. Who do you think you are questioning me with such arrogant words? Then he, then he goes, if you haven't read it, guys, go to the end of Job, about 37. He starts saying, well, you're gonna, you think you can take an alligator, Leviathan, whatever it is. I think it's an alligator. Can you put a hook in its nose, bring it home to your kids and, and uh, let them play with it? Hey, Job, where's snow come from? Who stores up hail? Where's the rain come from, Job? You know, you're so hot. Answer me. <clears throat> Job 40, verse 2. Do you still want to argue with the Almighty? You are God's critic, but do you have the answers? I mean, no, we don't have the answers. But I hope I can help us. Then Job says, okay, you ask, who is this that questions my wisdom with such ignorance? It is I, and I was talking about things I knew nothing about. Things far too wonderful for me. I don't know the answer, but I, I'm, let me just say this. Let me just say this. Love isn't love if you don't have a choice. So let's say <clears throat> this planet is empty and it's just me and Karen, which sometimes I think would be pretty awesome. <laughs> I mean, they can be pretty awesome, just you and your, or some other, you know. So all of a sudden, we bump into each other. She goes, oh, look at you. I'm like, well, look at you. <laughs> I've never seen anybody like you. She goes, why? She goes, because we're the only two on earth. <laughs> and she says, oh, well, I want to spend the rest of my life with you. I'm like, me too. She goes, I love you. I'm like, I love you. But as we go through life, about Three, four years in, I go, does she really love me? She really want to be with me? Because I'm the only dude on the planet. <laughs> she has no choice, right? <clears throat> it's good that she had a choice. It's good that I had a choice. Because I know out of all of you ugly guys, she chose me. <laughs> Another ugly guy. She says, I want to be with you. I want to be with you. And I know she loves me. We were watching something the other night. And I don't even remember what it was. And some guy was gone. And she's, this lady goes, when I'm gone, do you miss me? And I'm sitting there on the couch. She goes, she goes would you miss me if I was gone? And I said, yes, hon. I miss you. Why? Because I love her, and she knows I love her. God's given us a choice. God said, you got a choice. You can follow the enemy, or you can follow me. I'm going to give you a choice. And, and in the beginning, we chose evil. Saint, uh, Adam and Eve chose evil and opened the door to evil. And we live in a world that is not right. It's messed up because we've chosen evil. 
Let me, say, let me just say this. And a lot of you are so young you don't remember. And I was very young. And, you know, it was in the 60s. A lady named Madeline, Madeline Murray O'Hare got upset and said, I don't think we should have prayer in our school. And that was under the direction of Satan himself. Telling you, I don't want prayer in our school anymore. We don't want prayer in our school anymore. We don't want prayer in our school anymore. And she fought until prayer was removed from our school. And then what do we get? Then what do we get? What do we get when we say, God, we don't want you in our school. God, we don't want you in our country. God, I don't want you in my marriage. God, I don't want you in my business. God, don't touch my finances. God, I don't want you. I don't know about you, but I say, God, I want you. I'm going to say, I want you in our government and in our schools and in our country and in my marriage and in my family. I want you. Now we have cities and states that say, ah, Drugs aren't illegal anymore. Now they have homelessness and over addiction and all of these things happening. Go ahead, break, break crime. Go ahead, break crime. You aren't going to be punished. Okay. We don't want your standard God, so here's what we get. We get more of, of the evil. But here's the thing. You guys with me? Say amen. amen. Okay, good. Did you say amen just because you felt like you had to? <laughs> he knows what's, let's point to, he knows what's best for you. Look at some and tell him, God knows what's best for you. He knows. He knows what's best for you. My mom used to get, I'm telling you, there's some vegetables. I'm not a vegetable guy, but there's some's like, that's punishment. That's like a death. Creamed peas. Anybody ever had creamed peas? That's disgusting. Artichokes. My family loves artichokes. That's disgusting. Eat your green beans. Eat your, eat your cream peas. And I'm trying to get those things down like, this is not good for me. She goes, oh, it's good for you. Vegetables are good for you. I've had, I, I, I had a surgery, broke my arm, I had surgery there, I had surgery here, and uh, so I, I went to therapy one time, and he goes, okay, I mean, he gave me these exercises, I, I got it, I, I, I can learn, you don't have to show me and me pay you a bunch of money. If you're a therapist, I apologize. <laughs> But, I mean, I just had had surgery. They cut me open and took a bone out. And the guy's, okay, we're going to have to break up the, the what, what is it called? The scar tissue. Some he pulls the stuff off and he's like, I'm breaking the scar tissue up. And he starts driving on it. I'm like, dude, you're going to break it open. That hurts. Like, you're gonna, guess what I don't have here now? Scar tissue. I'm in there one time of many times from injuries I've had, and there's a lady laying on her back and had knee surgery. She's screaming, crying, cussing, just, you're killing me. And he's like, I got to do it. If I don't do this, lady, you're not going to have the full uh, uh, use of your knee. She's like, ah, this hurts. Ah, you Filthy. Oh my. I've never heard words like that, ladies. Stop it. <laughs> Screaming. Why? Because he knows what's best for us. Listen, two things. Pain causes growth. You should write that down. And I'm not talking about physical, I'm talking about, well, physical pain in some ways, because I'll give you an illustration, but. Pain causes us to grow. One of my grandsons, who got engaged last night, to, is he in here? Okay, somewhere back, he's hiding. I knew you'd do that, Papa. He comes in the house and he's got his sleeves up and I'm like, boy, you swole. You swole up, boy. He's like, yeah, Papa. I mean, he's big. He's big, you know how he got big? 
Pain. Not somebody hit pain. It hurts to lift weights. It hurts ap- well, hurts after you lift weights. It hurts me thinking about lifting weights. <laughs> I mean, he is swole. How'd you get like that, buddy? Papa, don't touch me. I am sore. I'm in pain. Why? Because I've been lifting. But hold on and wait. I'm going to get bigger and bigger. Pain causes growth. When you go through difficulty, when you go through it, when you get through it, look at somebody and tell them, you're going to get through this. You're going to come through this. You'll grow. But look at this second one. This is important. Look at this second one. Your greatest ministry will likely come out of your deepest hurt. Your greatest ministry will likely come out of your deepest hurt. Don't you love it when you tell somebody, like, man, I, this just happened to me. Oh, I'm having a hard time. And they say, yeah, I went through the same thing. But here's how you get through. I made it through. I made it through. I go through pain. I get through it. You start going through it. I can encourage you in your pain. Your greatest ministry will most likely come out of your deepest hurt. God, you know what's best for me. You know what's best for me, then why? But here's the question I want us to ask this morning. God, why are you so merciful to me? God, why are you so merciful to me? Why? You know what I've done in my life. You know I've been angry. You know the thoughts I've had. You know the things I've done. Why don't you just, why, why, why didn't you just kill me? Why? And why are you so merciful to me? to ask that right now because we say we say God why do bad things happen to good people look at somebody beside you and say you aren't that good it's okay Look at somebody now and say, guess what? I'm not perfect. Why haven't killed you for my why haven't you killed me for my thoughts and my actions? So say, well, I'm not that good and I'm not perfect. And there's some in here go, well, you know, I am. I am. I'm perfect. No, you're not. The blood of Jesus is the only thing that makes us right. But listen, listen. Jesus is the only one that was good. Jesus was the only one that truly was good. And guess what? He died for you. He's the only one that was good and he died for you. Look what Isaiah 53 verse 6 says. And this is prophetic of Jesus. This is a prophecy for telling. Yet the Lord laid on him. What? Yet the Lord laid on him. What? Yet the Lord laid on him. What? He was oppressed and treated harshly. Yet he never said a word. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep is silent before the shears, he didn't open his mouth. And justly condemned, he was led away. No one cared that he died without descendants, that his life was cut short in midstream. But he was struck down for the what? For the rebellion of his, for us.
Jesus is the only one that ever lived that was good. And they hung him on a cross. And our sins started pouring on him. Our sins. And at Easter, it talked about the sins of people coming on him. And you know what Jesus said on the cross? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because God is just. He can't look on sin. We aren't that good. Jesus was good. And on the cross, he said, I'm taking your sin. Taking your sin. Taking all of it. And if you're in here today and you're like, how did I get here? Why am I here? Or maybe you've been here a long time. And you don't know Jesus. He's not mad at you. He wants to be in relationship with you. He wants to know. He wants to. He wants you to be with him. When difficulty comes, we say, I can turn to Jesus. How how are people living without Jesus? He said, "Listen, if you don't know me today, come to me." I want us to bow our heads, and you say, "Doug, I." I, I want Jesus. How? Please now, please, please don't move around now, please. If you, if you absolutely have to, go ahead. But you don't know who you're sitting next to. First thing you have to do is just admit it. I need you, God. I need you. Second thing is believe. That Jesus is the Christ. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. See, confess. Confess your sins. And leave here today and be a doer of his word. Do what his word says. So if you're in here, no one's looking around. You say, Doug. When you pray that prayer, will you count me in? I want Jesus in my life. When you pray that prayer, will you count me in? If that's you and you say, Doug, when you pray that, count me in. Just lift your hand. Lift your hand up and say, Doug, that's me. Amen. Awesome. Awesome. Now let's pray. Everybody pray. And those of you who just raised your hand, let's pray together. God, I admit it. I need you. I can't live life without you. Jesus, I believe you're the Christ, the Son of the living God, born of the Virgin Mary, crucified on the cross. You rose again. To, do it, to give me eternal life to forgive me for my sins let's all say this I confess I've sinned I'm not that good will you forgive me wipe the slate of my life clean like I was born again in Jesus name amen 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 now when we're finished today those of you raise your hand if you don't mind, go to that wall and uh, sign that wall. Last week, a little boy named Colin came up. I was here, little guy. He said, I, I want to give my life to Jesus. I said, Let's go. And I prayed with him. He was so serious. He said, do you have a Bible? I said, yeah, I got a Bible. Went and got him a Bible. We went back there and signed that wall. Little precious dude. So do that for me today. And you can text HEART to 
0756. We'll put that up later. So I want you to stand. I want us to do something. I want us to, to sing this song. And if you're in here, and this is a no judgment zone, and you say, I, I got a lot of whys right now. I'm in the midst of a battle. While we sing this, just walk up here. Just feel the front, okay? Listen to the words as we sing it. Draw me close. Draw me close to you. Never let me go. Come on, sing it. Never let me go. Come on. If you have questions, you have whys, come on, walk down here. I lay it all down again. Come on. To hear you say, to hear you say.
Come on, everybody say, Lord, I worship you. Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Can we say it again? Come on, lift your hands. Sing, because of who you are. Because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, I will lift my voice and say, Because of who you are, say it again, Lord, I worship you, Lord, I worship you, because of who you are, Jehovah Jireh, sing it out, Jehovah Jireh, my provider. your hands out. I'm going to bless you. Send you home. I'll send you home with a blessing. Death and life. The book of Proverbs says death and life are in the power of the tongue. So I'm not speaking death. I'm speaking life right now. So put your hands out. Like, come on, bless me. So Lord, I ask you to bless our marriages and Bless our homes with peace and rest and joy. Let us enjoy being in our home. Remove strife and conflict, I pray. Let's learn to speak peace in Jesus' name. I ask you to bless our finances, Father. Bless our children, Lord. Be with our children and bless them. Come on, if you have kids or grandkids, say, Lord, bless my my grandkids and my kids. Come on, say it. Bless them. Protect them as they drive their car, fly on planes, ride bikes, play sports, go to school, do whatever they do. Bless them. But we pray, Lord, for those who've lost a loved one, that you bless them. Be with them. Touch their hearts that are broken. Fill their home with your peace, Father. Lord, bless our singles, I pray. As they go through life, bless them, I pray. In Jesus' name, look up here. I love this part. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make His face shine upon you. Lift His countenance upon you. Be gracious unto you and give you peace. Say this with me. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, amen. Have a great week, everybody. We'll see. Hey, thank you so much for joining us here at Church on Fire Online. And we would love if you would follow us on our social media pages. So we look forward to seeing you next time here at Church on Fire Online. And God bless you.